This chapter introduces the concepts of aggregate demand and aggregate supply, explaining the shapes of the aggregate demand and aggregate supply curves and the forces that cause them to shift. Additionally, the equilibrium levels of prices and real GDP are considered. The chapter analyzes the effects of shifts in the aggregate demand and or aggregate supply curves on the price level and size of real GDP. This is a variable price, variable output model. As you'll see, this chapter's model can distinguish between the immediate short run, the short run, and the long run. Part 1 is focused on aggregate demand, Part 2 on aggregate supply, and Part 3 on how the nation reaches full employment and how it deals with not being at full employment. Aggregate demand is a schedule or curve that shows the various amounts of real domestic output that domestic and foreign buyers desire to purchase at each possible price level. The aggregate demand curve shows an inverse relationship between price level and real domestic output. Don't confuse the reasons for the inverse relationship with what we learned about in demand of chapter 3. The explanation of the inverse relationship is not the same as for demand for a single product which centered on the substitution and income effects. Substitution effect doesn't apply within the scope of domestically produced goods since there is no substitute for all goods. Income effect also doesn't apply in the aggregate case since income is now varied with the real GDP. The explanation of the inverse relationship between price level and real output and aggregate demand are explained by three effects. The first is the real balances effect. When price level falls, the purchasing power of existing financial balances rises, which can increase spending. The second is the interest rate effect. A decline in price level means lower interest rates that can increase levels of certain types of spending. The third is the foreign purchases effect. When price level falls, and we assume foreign price levels stay the same, U.S. prices will be cheaper relative to foreign prices, which will tend to increase spending on U.S. exports and also decrease U.S. import spending in favor of U.S. made products that compete with imports, similar to the substitution effect. This figure depicts the aggregate demand curve. The downsloping aggregate demand curve, AD, indicates an inverse or negative relationship between the price level and the amount of real output purchased. Determinants of aggregate demand are the other things, besides price level, that can cause a shift or change in demand. These are easy to remember, if you can remember the GDP expenditures equation. Changes in consumer spending can be caused by changes in several factors, consumer wealth, consumer expectations, household debt, and taxes, as we discussed in Chapter 27. Changes in investment spending can be caused by changes in several factors as well. Interest rates, expected returns, expected future business conditions, technology, degree of excess capacity, and business taxes. These were also covered in Chapter 27. The last two are changes in government spending and changes in net export spending unrelated to price level, which may be caused by changes in other factors such as national incomes abroad and exchange rates. These will be discussed in more depth in later chapters. This figure shows changes in aggregate demand. A change in one or more of the listed determinants of aggregate demand will shift the aggregate demand curve. The rightward shift from AD1 to AD2 represents an increase in aggregate demand. The leftward shift from AD1 to AD3 shows a decrease in aggregate demand. The vertical distances between AD1 and the dashed lines represent the initial changes in spending, and then through the multiplier effect, that spending produces the full shifts of the curves. If you felt comfortable with Chapter 27, you can skip the next two slides or keep watching for a quick review. Consumer spending is impacted several ways other than price levels. Consumer wealth is the difference between household assets, which include things like homes or stocks and bonds, and liabilities, which include loans or credit cards. The value of the assets can change and the consumer will react by spending more as asset values increase and spending less as asset values decrease. Households can borrow in order to spend more, which increases aggregate demand in the short run, but in the long run, the household reduces spending in order to pay off household debt, and aggregate demand decreases. 
Expectations of future higher incomes or higher prices will increase current household spending and shift aggregate demand to the right. Expectations of lower household spending or lower prices will decrease aggregate demand. And finally, a reduction in personal income taxes increases disposable income and increases spending by the household, which increases AD. An increase in taxes will decrease disposable income and decrease household spending, which in turn decreases aggregate demand. Investment spending is spending on capital goods. Increases in investment spending increases aggregate demand, and decreases in investment goods decreases aggregate demand. Both instances are subject to the multiplier effect, which causes consumer spending impacted by business investment to shift the AD curve even further. As real interest rates increase, the cost of borrowing increases and subsequently less will be borrowed, resulting in less money spent, reducing aggregate demand. On the other hand, a decrease in real interest rates will increase borrowing and subsequently investment spending will increase aggregate demand. If business owners and managers are optimistic about future expected returns, then they'll spend more now increasing the aggregate demand, and if expected returns are less than favorable, they will spend less now reducing aggregate demand. New technologies enhance future expected returns and thus motivate businesses to spend money on the new technology, increasing AD. If excess capacity increases, businesses will decrease current spending, decreasing AD. If excess capacity decreases, businesses will increase spending in order to expand operations, increasing aggregate demand. An increase in business taxes will decrease the amount of after-tax income for businesses, reducing the amount of spending businesses are capable of, reducing aggregate demand. And a decrease in business taxes will have the opposite effect on aggregate demand. Other things equal, if government spending increases, aggregate demand increases. If government spending decreases, aggregate demand decreases. An example of government spending is more or less transportation projects or military spending. This does not include transfer payments like Social Security or welfare. Remember that the final part of the GDP equation, net exports, is found by subtracting imports from exports. If net export spending rises, AD rises. If net export spending declines, then aggregate demand declines. There are two possible explanations as to why this occurs, both of which will be covered in depth in the last unit. The first possible explanation is the national income of foreign countries. As the national incomes of trading partners of the U.S. increase, they are more able to purchase U.S. produced goods and services, which increases aggregate demand. If the foreign nation incomes decline, then the opposite occurs. The second possibility is caused by shifts in the exchange rate. If the dollar depreciates relative to another country's currency, aggregate demand increases. Depreciation of the dollar makes it cheaper for foreigners to buy U.S.-made goods since U.S. products become less expensive to them. This occurs because foreign buyers can quote-unquote buy more dollars with their currency. Using that same example, dollar depreciation also makes foreign currency more expensive to Americans, which discourages the U.S. consumer from buying imports. Aggregate demand can decrease through changes in currency exchange rates if the U.S. dollar appreciates relative to another country's currency. The currency appreciation of the dollar discourages U.S. exports because now U.S. goods are relatively more expensive than before since it takes more of the foreign currency to buy the U.S. dollar. This will also encourage more import spending since the U.S. dollar can buy more of another nation's currency than before. Net exports will decline, which in turn reduces aggregate demand.